Okay, thanks. So uh, we are very proud to have you here yeah, at Berkeley World Spain, and especially the concert you are going to help tomorrow in Barcelona. Um, thanks very much for being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, this is your very first time here in Spain, here in Barcelona. How did you arrange this concert? I did it. They actually reached out to me and asked me if I would be interested in doing a concert in which they uh, translated my, my lyrics into Catalan and uh, into Spanish um, and some of the songs in English. And I was so excited and thrilled and honored. Uh, there's a time in your life where you have to put your ego down and realize that there's an audience that doesn't know you yet. And um, it's a great way to introduce yourself to a, a brand new audience, a brand new world of people that don't know your work and uh, hopefully will uh, buy your CDs and help pay for your rent, <laughs> you know? It's, it's nearly to be sold out the concert tomorrow, yeah. am I right? Yeah. Are you surprised? Uh, I'm not surprised in the way that when they announced me, we sold 40 tickets. Um, it's a 700 seat, seat theater in Spain. Yeah. Um, when they announced the performers, then it sold out. I just feel extremely lucky and fortunate. And when I was doing research on the performers, you know, obviously, you know, we have the best of the best here. It's, uh, it's not just small little tiny stars that are coming up on stage. We could have had the, the majority of the mass musical singers, performers, uh, like Clea Salonga, yeah. Dan Spinoza, Lisa Calloway have sang your songs. Yeah. Is there still any actor or actors you'd like to see performing your songs? Yes, uh, we were actually talking about this at lunch. She's not an actress, but she's a singer. Her name is Tina Arena. You know who she is, because I see you shaking your head. Um, she had one hit song in um, America with Chains. More musical theater people know her version of Whistle Down the Wind from that Andrew Lloyd Webber celebration that she did, that she opened. Um, she's a very big star in Australia. Uh, she is probably my favorite singer, and uh, out of the singers I've, I haven't had the opportunity to work with. And so she's definitely one on my list, and thankfully I'm in touch with her manager now, and we're hoping to make that happen. So that is now starting to progressively get a little bit more um, uh, positive in, the, in the, the terms of possibly happening now. Every song is about my life. So, you know, the best thing about doing concerts is that I get to have the opportunity uh, performing with incredible vocalists that are able to emotionally connect to the songs. And I get the opportunity to say to them, I don't want you to sing the Shoshana Bean version of Home. I don't want you to sing the Liz uh, Callaway version of Good Night. I don't want you to sing the Jane Monheit version of Good Night. I want you to do your version. I want you to take me into your journey. And I, I mean, even when we were working on Always in there, I said, listen, what is your story? And she said, oh, the song is about my family. I said, beyond your family. Who in your family is, is feeling pain right now? Where's the sadness coming from? And she said, my grandfather. My grandfather's ill and sick. And we went through the story of her grandfather and her life. And it's very important for me to then be able to release my story. Because my story for that song was uh, a song about uh, my ex-partner who was HIV positive. And when he first came to tell me he was HIV positive. And so for me, to be able to release that in the world and allow some other incredible vocalists tell their story makes a, a whole new, you know, a tribute to whoever it is that they're attributing the song to. So um, I feel very fortunate and very lucky, even if the songs are painful, uh, they get to hold the pain for that moment and I get to sort of reduce myself to just sitting behind the piano. Uh, so I feel very lucky. After this experience here in Barcelona, would you plan to take this concert to Madrid with another performer? Have you already talked to the producers? Uh, I'm, I'm going to. <laughs> yeah, they already know. That's, that's, they just said that to me today. They just said uh, everyone is begging us to bring your concert to Madrid and then go from there. So uh, I, I didn't even know that. Um, listen, as I said to them, I, maybe because it's my business sensibility, I said let's see how the audience responds tomorrow. Um, and then we'll go from there. You know, it's very hard because, you know, 30% of the audience completely understands English. Another 30% understands English 50-50. Um, and then you have 60% of an audience that doesn't understand English at all um, here. So it's going to be interesting to see the songs of mine that we kept in English 
and see how emotionally connected they feel to that material as an audience member. And hopefully we are able to tell the story somehow uh, through the music, through the melody, and um, they get an idea of what it is that we're trying to say, whether it is it's okay to be gay, whether it's it's okay to be clinically depressed, let's just keep pressing on and live our lives and find our, our, our way to tomorrow instead of worrying so much about what's next. Um, you know, hopefully they get to hear that, um, even if they might not have the opportunity of understanding the lyrics and the greatest thing about music and musical theater is it's uh, the one thing that we have as a universal language. Everyone understands music. So, you know, it's the one thing that hopefully people will take with them and walk out the door with and uh, celebrate and honor. So I'm very fortunate and hopefully we will be in Madrid and we'll be doing another interview there soon. Yeah, why not? Yeah.